everyone. Back out on the water in my crawdad today and we're fishing a crystal clear pond. Right away I can see some bluegill in the water, which is a good sign. Swimming away towards the right part of the screen. And I'm going to pick up a frog rod to start just because it looks kind of froggy. I'm going to get my braid wet and come up with a plan. So a lot of times I'll take a short cast with the casting rod just to start to get the braid wet and that seems like it helps uh, prevent backlashes. So I've fished this pond before once or twice ice fishing and once in the uh, late spring early summer. So I don't have a ton of time in on this pond but it's pretty small and I know it has fish because I've caught them but the fish tend to run a little small. There's not much to this pond. You can almost see the whole thing on camera. It's basically a shallow weed bowl. And uh, the weed bowl happens to have pretty clear water, so it's fun to fish. You know, it's sort of like fishing in an aquarium. You can see everything as you're going over it. I think the max depth is maybe eight to 10 feet, but a lot of it is less than five. So it's a very visual fishery. The downside is that the fish can see you too. And the little ones aren't too smart, but the bigger ones are kind of wary. So sometimes long casts help with that sort of situation. So I'm gonna throw that frog around out here for a little bit, see what I can come up with. I can see some perch in the water too, in addition to those bluegill. That just kind of gives me an idea of what kind of bait fish are in the water and uh, maybe start of a game plan. I could hear some fish busting behind me so I saw, thought I'd uh, turn around and cast that way. For whatever reason, the fish seem to like to get around behind me, no matter which direction I'm facing. Try to outflank me. I can see more perch in the water now on this side. This would be a great spot for, uh, for kids to come and fish. And I'm sure there's a lot of places like this you know, around the country. Maybe the water isn't this clear, but I mean, you can imagine just throwing a bobber and worm out there right off of where I launched and you could have a great time just catching bluegill and perch. Or if you had a little boat, you could uh, you push off from the shore and you know, the whole thing is basically fishable. So what I'm going to try to do today is to try to locate some bigger fish. And I'm going to do that with a frog, a jig, swim jig. And I'm kind of deciding what to do now. I think what I'm going to do is go over to the side that has some wind. Because the wind in this clear water might help me a few more fish and I also see some shade on the other side of the pond so I'm gonna make a few more casts here and then get on the other side of the pond and see if there's any bass in that shade line because I'm kind of blind casting around here seeing if there's any fish in the pads I should say it's just after lunch now. Sun's pretty high. I'm not expecting too much. And a hurricane just went by. So you can see that uh, some of the lily pads, the tops of them are ripped off. That's because of high winds. This is pretty far from the coast, but um, it still ripped those lily pad tops off. And this is a uh, post-front condition, so 
Generally fishing's better pre-front, pre-storm. This is post-storm. So bluebird skies. And just because of the time of day and the fact that it's post-front, I wanted almost a sure thing for today. And uh, this pretty much qualifies as almost a sure thing. So I'm on the other side of the pond. I'm fishing that shade line. And I'm roll casting that frog. I got a frog on. I'm roll casting that frog into the grass and reeds. There's some rocks there. But there's some overhangs. There's some rocks. There's some wood. And I'm just kind of roll casting that frog along. Sometimes I put it pretty deep in the reeds. Sometimes not so deep. I'm just trying to get a feel for where the fish might be hanging out today. Like I said, I haven't been here since uh, spring, so I don't, I don't really know what's going on with this pond. As soon as that frog hit the water, there was a fish on it, so I had to react pretty quickly. But he's a start. He's not a giant, but he's a start. Yeah, you can tell... You can tell by the size of his mouth he's not a big fish, but I was happy he decided to eat that little frog. That's a Z-Man Leap Frogs Walking Frog. It really does walk pretty well. It's got a good keel on it. Comes through the junk pretty well, comes through pads pretty well, and I've been having some good luck with it. Early in the season you can fish a lot of different frogs, but this is uh, mid-September. Uh, the weeds are just starting to die back. Not a lot. And it's still pretty thick. So I like that, that walking frog. Oops, I held him up a little too high. There he is. So I'm just fishing that shadow line. Walking the frog. Water really is so clear here. It's nice. That one I was being a little lazy. I was walking the frog with just the rod and not reeling. And so when that fish hit, I had to really reel up slack fast so I could set the hook. Good. Gone. Quick release. That's okay. So I caught a bunch of the frog, but I thought maybe I could catch a few more um, better fish on a jig. So I, what I've got here is a tungsten compact casting jig. It's made by Striking. And it's pretty compact, like the name implies. And I put a tiny pack of craw on there. Sometimes if the fish the bigger fish don't really want to eat a frog if you put a jig in the same place as you were putting the frog you can get a few more a few more better quality fish I'm also going to put some crawfish scent on there to help seal the deal that's procure crawfish or crawdad I have a bobber stop on my line because I don't know if how well that jigs gonna come through the weeds so if, if uh, the jig isn't coming through the weeds smoothly, I'll cut it off and put on a Texas rig and my bobber stop's already on there. And the bobber stop doesn't really affect anything to do with the jig, so I just leave it on there sometimes. Makes it easy to switch back and forth if the jig is getting hung up in the weeds. So I'm casting to the outside of the weeds and I'm also casting the jig right in the middle of the weeds. I kind of ra ran out of uh, shadow line to fish with the frog, so that was another re reason I switched to the jig. It doesn't take too long. Seems like out in the middle where there's full sun, the fish seem to like the jig a little bit better, and I could do all right with the frog in the shade. He's all right.
maybe a little bigger than the frogfish, but not much. They're all pretty small. Another thing you can do to try to get some better fish, or better bites anyway, is to take that frog off and put on a swim jig. So that's what I've done with my frog rod. It actually is a pretty good swim jig rod too. And it's a pretty big swim jig I've got on there. It's a Queen's Tackle swim jig with a, a D Walker 120. It's a tungsten head and you need some some kind of big plastic, hard plastic to, uh, to get that tungsten head to move at all. It's a very dense head um, and I still give it a couple pops with my rod just to get that skirt pulsing. With a tin head swim jig it's a little easier to get that skirt moving or a lead head. I can't fish lead where I am. Actually the law is not exactly too clear to me but I think I can't fish lead. So that's why I'm fishing the tungsten and the tin. That's another swim jig fish. Uh, the color I was trying to match was the perch that I saw in the water. And so it has kind of a green pumpkin scale skirt on there. And then the D-Walker color is called Silverside. But with the skirt and kind of the brownish, greenish color of the silver side, it, together it sort of looks like a perch. That's what I was going for anyway. If I wanted to match the bluegill, I'd use uh, kind of a blue shad color D-Walker and uh, maybe a green pumpkin blue skirt. I think either one would probably produce in a pond like this. Some other places you need to be a little bit more specific. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Gonna make my way back to the ramp. It was a good day. Lots of fun at this little pond. I'll put links in the video description for all the fishing gear I used today. Rods, reels, line, bait, all that good stuff. So that you can duplicate this at uh, some local pond wherever you live and hopefully have some success there too. Okay, thanks again. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya! Oof.